Diva. I'm your host, Christy Eikers. In this week's episode, we are talking all things super, as in Super Bowl. Liza Atkinson is back to share some of her super kitchen gadgets. And Benjamin, our Yiddish yapper, well, he's going to teach us some words he uses to describe his new love for football. And finally, I'll close the show with a story about working on the Super Bowl halftime show in 1992. Also, also, also. We kick off each show with a segment we call also. It's just a little time for us to follow up on some past episodes, to clarify things, or maybe highlight some things for you. Now, in case you aren't following us on social media, I do want to point out a couple things we shared last week. First of all, you can now hear us on Spotify. This is really exciting. We're hoping this makes listening even more accessible for all of you. Another fun thing we shared was about one of our favorite binge-worthy Amazon shows, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. We think there are a couple things that make us a wee bit like M cubed. M cubed. Three M's. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. First of all, when you tune into that show, you will often hear them throw some Yiddish words out. Well, that's just like the lessons we have with our Yiddish yapper. And last week, Annie highlighted Elixir's lipstick in our Taking It For A Test Drive where we talked about all those fabulous moisturizing products. Well, you can actually see this lipstick in action on M-Cubed. When the marvelous Mrs. Maisel is applying the luscious lipstick in that retro gold tube, well, that is Elixir's lipstick. Finally, I have to close out the also segment with a bit of sad news. Our Renaissance rebel has some gunk going on in his life, so he will be on hiatus for a while. We're really going to miss our long-distance serenade. The songs JC sings each episode are a very fun way. It's just a great, fun little musical break. JC, we wish you well and hope you come back to us very, very soon. On to the show. On this week's Taking It For A Test Drive, I've asked Liza Atkinson to join me to share some of her favorite, shall we say, super kitchen gadgets. Work- Liza, welcome back. Workhorse. Workhorse work- work- kitchen work- gadgets. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say gadget is maybe a little mm-hmm. bit too trite. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Right, okay. Though. So let's go. Let's. I want to hear about these now. I, I, I'm excited to learn a little bit more about both of them. Okay. So first... Um, Let's talk about the Vitamix. So I know there's a lot of other versions out there that claim to be just as good. But so I've owned my Vitamix probably five years. Um, and it's one of those giant workhorse superpower blenders. I mean, it does all the things. And I know, let's just talk okay, about so, the price point because people are like, okay, they well, hear me say, say Vitamix Tell- and they're like, whoa, Nelly. Well, let's, for those people who don't have a clue what a Vitamix is, yeah. let's back up yeah. and talk about that. So Vitamix is, okay, so picture like your regular old like Oster blender, and this is like a blender on steroids. So, I mean, I can't think of anything that you can't blend in the Vitamix. I mean, it just makes, it's a superpower, and it's loud, as a mother, I mean, let's just be real. I mean, my three-year-old covers his ears when I've got it on full blast. But it is, I mean, you can make, you can crush almonds in it to make almond milk. You can make smoothies with everything frozen. You can, um, you know, puree soups or whatever. I mean, it just, it does everything. And it always performs. It just, there's never a moment where I'm, where I'm going to reach for something else because the Vitamix can't do it. I mean, it's just like, go big or go what home. Differ, 
what differentiates it as a blender? I mean, aside from being able to do quote unquote, what, what, like what are the differentiating factors? I mean, I think it's, I think it's the horsepower. I mean, I can't tell you off the top of my head what the horsepower is, but it's got a serious like rev engine in it. It's the, it's the blender that when you go to like a smoothie bar or, you know, Starbucks and they make a Frappuccinos, those are Vitamixes though. That's what they use. It's like hardcore, serious blendage. Is that a word? Question mark? Blendage? Well, you made mm-hmm. it a word. Now, I've heard that you can actually, and correct me if I'm wrong, I thought I heard you could make soup in it and it would heat at the same time. So there is a version that has that option. I don't have that. I just have a basic oh, okay. basic model, okay. 101 or whatever. But um, okay. my good friend, Jen Jelly, who you know, has the one where you can cook soup in it. And it's an option where, yeah, you put everything raw that you would put on the stovetop and you it has like settings you know six minutes eight minutes or whatever on this soup setting and it will heat it and cook it at the same time as it blends it oh wow right okay 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 so you know average price for a vitamix depending on the model varies anywhere from like 300 to 500 to 600 dollars okay so right okay sticker shock sticker shock take a breath um, here's the catch. They sell them at Costco. So if you have a Costco membership, they will sometimes run them on sale, maybe even during this time of the year because everyone's in like smoothie healthy mode in January, right? Um, okay. And I've also seen them go on good sales on QVC or any of those home shopping channels or whatever. Really? Yeah. So I think I paid maybe 250 for mine and that was on serious sale about five years ago. Okay. So you just watched the sale. Yeah, you were watching I would imagine the sale. Amazon does it too. You know, maybe even now okay. during January. You know, but it is. There are others out there that claim to be. You know, what's that one that's like a bullet? You know, you like flip it over and it's like a bullet, like blender or whatever. I mean, those are fine, but this one. I mean, if you want the big Kahuna, it is so worth it. And. um I mean, the blender, everything just holds up so well. I use it every single day, Christy. I blend my coffee in it every single morning. What do you mean you blend your coffee? So I make homemade cold press, and then I add, like, almond milk, and then I add protein powder, and then I add, you know, some other, maybe some greens sometimes, and I blend it, oh. um, or some butter if I'm doing the Bulletproof coffee. Maybe that's a future episode discussion. Um, okay. So I use it every single morning because it just makes everything go together and you don't have like residue. And because sometimes when. What's cleanup? S- Tell me about cleanup. Yeah, so cleanup, super easy. You put a couple drops of dish liquid in it and hot water and you fill it up maybe three quarters of the way and then turn it, run it on high on the blender setting oh. on high. And it like cleans itself. So then you just rinse it. So, because you can't put oh, it in wow. the dishwasher or anything, but it's super right, right. easy. Okay. Um, I've traveled. No special I've attachments. traveled with it. I've taken it to the cabin. I have. I mean, I've taken it to girls' weekends. I thought, like it well, has, I thought you were gonna say you took it like out of plane. I'm like, wait, what? I mean, in the right setting, no, I could. No, um, it is too big. <laughs> <laughs> you are ridiculous. It is too big. Um, they're not. But you have to have, this is the kind of thing you have um, out on your kitchen counter. Yes. My husband would prefer that I put it away every day, but I use it every morning and I just think, uh-uh, it just sits out. It's it's fine. It's just fine. Does does it come in different colors? Is it kind I've of like I've seen a, it a... in black and red. I don't know if it's come out in um, more colors recently just because they haven't been on my radar, but I wouldn't be surprised if it had different versions. So it's not quite like the KitchenAid color color you know mixer right and I'm not kidding about the loudness I mean my dog leaves the room if I'm crushing like a smoothie on high power 10 you know it's really loud they do have a model out there that is quieter but it's about seven hundred dollars so I just think for 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 a little loudness I can pay for the for the louder version (laughs) Oh my gosh! Well, I was gonna say, are there any payment plan offerings? Maybe on QVC, QVC there probably totally on yeah, QVC. Exactly. So maybe like if somebody wants to put this on their Mother's Day mm-hmm. gift list, they could tell their husband now, and he could start you know his down payment plan. Yeah, and if you know you're in the January <laughs> mode of you know eating healthier and starting your day with a protein shake or a smoothie or something, I'm telling you, 
I mean, I've had it for five years and I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Well, so now the next kitchen item we're going to talk about also has a bit of a health twist to it, yes. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, as people are maybe trying to eat healthier in the new year, this is a good time to talk about it. So tell our listeners about this item. So this is the Inspiralizer. So if you've seen in the grocery stores, sometimes you'll see like um, zoodles, which are zucchini noodles, or butternut squash noodles, or sweet potato noodles. So the whole idea that you are replacing a pasta with a vegetable noodle. Yes. Now, yesterday I was at our local Kowalski's, and 10 ounces of four different kinds. They had the butternut squash, they had a beet, and they had a carrot, I think. Um, they are normally... For 10 ounces of these things, $5.99. So the investment in a spiralizer, I think, can save people some money. You know, it's ridiculous. It. They're 8 or $9 for a pack at Whole Foods. And I just think, I mean, I get it. People are lazy. I mean, it's, you know, time is money. I get it. But so I want to say they're one, like 25 to $35 on Amazon. They're a device. Again, I know we're like, oh, my God, how many kitchen gadgets does a sister need? Um, but... And they it mounts to your um your countertop with like a suction, and then you just push in the vegetable and you can you know change it from thicker noodles to thinner noodles or whatever. But there is not a yeah. there's not anything really you can't in spiralize that's like you know dense and hefty like a vegetable. And just so our listeners know, I actually asked for one of these after your consult for Christmas, and I got okay. one. And it was purchased on Amazon, and I think it was about $30. Yeah. And so I've been taking it for a test drive, if you yes. will, for the past couple of weeks. And I'm loving it. And the thing I like about it is it's there's a ease to it. I, when people say it's too much work, this thing is a small thing. And um, to get it set up, it takes zero time at all. And it's not hard to do. I, I'm going to say that my sister-in-law let me take her. She has the spiralizer that attaches to the kitchen aid, aid mixer. Okay. okay. And that's a, I think that's about a $120 unit that you can sometimes get for about 80 with coupons and whatnot. And? Um, it's phenomenal and it, and it is really fast. But for me, my problem is, is my KitchenAid mixer lives below in a mm. cupboard. And for me to get my KitchenAid mixer out and then this gadget on top of that, it was just too much for me. Yeah. And it, it doesn't bother my sister-in-law at all, but that was just too much for me. So this is like my solution. But uh, I will tell you, that's an amazing spiralizer. It's just right now my KitchenAid mixer doesn't live on my counter. Right. And so it's just a pain so yeah but I love this thing yeah and all the parts go in the dishwasher so it's easy to clean it's easy um like you said there's several different versions out there I think the one you have is the Inspiralized ZED brand by Ali Mafucci she's the one that created it um she you can follow her on Instagram her handle is Inspiralized she also has um her own personal handle on Instagram but she does recipes and video tutorials all the time and things you don't think you would think about to inspire lies she will like a pineapple or you know apples or just things other than veggies that you're you're like oh I wouldn't have thought of that and it's just again a way to eat more veggies because who doesn't need to eat more fruit and vegetables and the question I get a lot is do you cook it then so how do you you know you've you've done the the spiralizing of the zucchini or the squash or whatever yes you do cook it obviously cuz otherwise you would eat i guess you could eat raw zucchini Right. I was going to say, there's some recipes out there um, for um, like a raw zucchini. Um, I've also seen the cabbage. So you're making like more of a slaw okay. with it. Um, so I've seen those. But yeah, to your point, I prefer my I, I prefer mine cooked. Yeah. And I just I saw Tam a couple of minutes. It's nothing, you know, super labor intensive because they're, you know, in small pieces. So they cook really fast. Does that make sense? Well, the. Absolutely. But the other thing I'd say is there's some really creative recipes out there that I've found. Um, last night I made a pizza and the base of it was, uh, the crust of it was sweet potato noodles. And it was phenomenal, yeah. you know, just to put my toppings on, on top of that. I loved it. Now, is it a pizza? No. But when you put your sausage and your pizza sauce on top of there, it 
you know, has all the flavors of a pizza. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah and it was, it was outstanding. You know, I'll inspire Liza a lot of vegetables and then put them in a frittata, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. Sh- because yeah. I'm always trying to no, get I more think... veggies in that way, too. That woman you mentioned, say her name one more time. Ali, I think it's Mafucci. Malfucci? We'll link to it in the yeah. show notes and we'll link to we'll link to her website because I was just dumbfounded by the amount of recipes she has on her website. Um, the other thing, have you tried beets in it yet? Because I'm a big fan of beets. I hate beets. Oh my gosh, you do I think that's they so taste like dirt. Okay, you and my sister both <sighs> have that reaction. Oh my god, I can't believe you, the foodie I girl, know. doesn't like beets. I try them all the time because I think, you know, they're, they're, I mean, they're all the rage right now. And I just think they literally taste like I'm eating soil. Okay, that cracks me up. I learned something new about mm-hmm. you today. I, I had no idea I you were not a beet fan. Yeah. Well, I love I love me some beets and you can spiralize beets I'm and you can make a beet. I'm that you love beets. <laughs> Have you done cooked beets and like with a spiralized Sister, recipe? I've tried, them tried to... every way, and I because <laughs> you're right. At gourmet dinner club, someone will frequently make something with beets, and I always try it. You know, because I'm always up for anything. But as soon as I'm done swallowing, I'm like, ugh, give me a taste of something else that tastes like earth. Oh, that is so funny. You are so funny. Well, you and Annie have that in common because she can't stand. I don't them, like but, mushrooms uh, anyway. either for that same reason. They taste like dirt to me. Does she like? Okay, does she Annie like mushrooms? Doesn't like mushrooms See, either. I think, what is up with I think, you too? I think that's a common thing. That if you don't like one, you often don't like the other because they're just too like earthy. Ugh. Oh my god, that is too funny. Well, I I like both, so I'll when you get your um, what do you call it? Your CSA mm-hmm. box. Um, I'll, I'll take your beets and your mushrooms. Okay, All day, friend? any day. Mm-hmm. They're yours. <laughs> they're yours. <laughs> Okay, well, we're going to put links to both these products we discussed in the show notes yes. um, and uh, some links to some um, some recipes. But this is our episode where we're talking about the Super Bowl. Mm. And so I want to pick your brain for a couple appetizers. If people are going to a Super Bowl party or if they're hosting one, two of your favorite uh, recipes for a party. I love me a good Super Bowl party and all the snacks, right? Because it's just like game day. I'm all I'm there for all of it. So my two favorite to serve at a Super Bowl party. One, I mean guacamole. I mean, is it really a Super Bowl party without guacamole? I don't think so. I agree. Um, I'm kind of known for my guacamole. I'm not gonna lie. It has a reputation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I I have been known to travel thousands of miles with all the ingredients to make it at a tailgate at a Gopher Nebraska away football game. And people were like, I can't believe you're hand making guacamole. And I was like, um, of course I am. So anyway, um, guacamole, yes, for days. I Mine is very much based off of the uh, Chipotle guacamole recipe. So if you Google Chip, I mean, there's lots of bloggers that have recreated it. I'm not going to give away my special secret because it's kind of patented. Okay, we're um, sharing recipes, you knucklehead. But Are I'm just saying me? it's really close to that that uh, recipe. Oh, oh for I gotta gosh keep sakes, some things like close to the best here, Christy. You know, I can't give away all the goods. Oh my God, people! This is the most. Mm-hmm. I'm so disappointed just in Google, our guest today. Google I can't take Chipotle it. guacamole I'll recipe. I'll link to it. I'll link to that one, and then I'll put a little asterisk uh-huh. that says mm-hmm. omitting Liza's mm-hmm. secret I can't, ingredient. I can't. I mean, I can't I even can't. believe nope. you right mm-hmm. now. You're redonk. Okay. So, um, are you going to share the next recipe? Because if you're not going to share the next recipe, I don't even think you should waste Calm our time. Calm down. Calm down. Back to the guacamole <laughs> for a hot second. Be sure you always are serving a giant plate of veggies alongside of a giant bowl of chips because, I mean, you know, it's just good. It's good to have options. And I know, like, you're thinking, really, Liza, we're eating healthy on the Super Bowl, but someone might, you know, be trying to eat, pay attention or whatever. Just be mindful that you can have some options when it comes to the guacamole. And personally, I'd prefer to fill up on veggies and guacamole and then have a few chips, but that's just how I like to roll. Um, oh, there you go. Okay, enough sass out of you, man. Tough crowd today. <laughs> um, okay, so the next recipe, Christy, is an actual recipe. We'll link to it, and it's called white chicken. No secret. No secret. Hidden ingredients. It's actually my friend Amanda Paz's recipe. She has a blog. She's local here. She has a blog called um, Heartbeat, the vegetable, Heartbeat Kitchen. Oh. 
and she we will link yeah, to that. Yeah, she's a she's a longtime Twin Cities food blogger. She's lovely. But her recipe for white chicken chili dip stop everything. It is really so good. You make it in a little cast iron and it comes out hot and oozy and delicious and it's like crack. It's so good. Mhm. I I can't wait. What I mean, is it's it like, easy to it's make? It's super easy. It's got all the yummy things in it. Chicken and cheese and chilies and spices and mm, when you broil it in the oven. I mean, it's just like I could eat the entire thing. No, do you serve that one with chips or with veggies or both? Both, I would. Yeah, definitely. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so you could bring a pot of guacamole mm-hmm. and a... Um, mm-hmm. This best in a cast iron pan, I'm assuming. Yeah, so yeah, or yeah. You could bring it to someone and then just you know heat it up for a hot minute when you get there, just so it's nice and bubbly and oozy. Yum! Well, I can't wait to try that that recipe. We will link to that recipe in the show notes. Yeah, the full recipe with no hidden omitted ingredients. Stop it. <laughs> What do you got? What's oh, on your it. list for Super Bowl appetizers? I, listen, no, I, I, I'm deferring to you with the Super Bowl. Um, I, I, Come on, you I'm don't have a good sure. one in your back pocket? A go-to? Oh, well, I would say, no, I have a favorite memory of a Super Bowl party oh. that was held in my basement in like 1976, and that was the basement with the red shag carpeting on the walls, Oh, um, you know, and on the floor. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 not red. I'm sorry. It was orange. It was burnt I mean, orange. Rust. They're in the same family. And, and then there was wooden paneling, and then there was also sexy, rust tile on one portion of the sexy. floor. And then there was a bar with an orange, um, um, what do you call the laminate um, on top of a bar? It oh, was yeah. orange on the top. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And we had a Super Bowl party. My parents did in the basement. This was a big deal. And one of the ladies, Mrs. Stordahl, and this was new at the time. You probably weren't even born. Well, you certainly weren't, I don't think. And it was a hot taco dip, and it was very different than anything we had tasted. <laughs> I'm going to, for nostalgia reasons, I'm going to pull out that recipe, and I'll link to that recipe, because I wonder what made it so different. But we thought that was just, like, the craziest thing ever. We'd never had anything like it back in 1976. Hot taco dip. I mean, it sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and revolutionary, Fred. apparently. Well, okay, I, this is funny. I'm going to find that dip. I, I can't even remember, but I just, I, isn't it funny that I remember that being served in the basement? Yeah. But my mom has a dip recipe that um, she loves. She got from a friend, and it is a hot, cheesy mm. bean dip that is to die mm. for and super easy. And I will tell you, it's very fun to make that before you go out, and then maybe when you come home, late at night and you've got some munchies it's really good to have that late at night too uh warmed up um it's usually a fan favorite and it can be made in minutes and everybody loves it so i'll link to that that dip as well i'm going to find that other one my nostalgia dip mm-hmm. i'm not saying but i'm just From, saying is what you're saying I yeah like it. kathy stored I, like I know kathy stored all brought that and i think she had this fancy um container she served it into probably something fancy like pyrex no, no, it was, I think it was plastic. Oh, fancy Tupperware. <laughs> I like it. Oh my God, friend. I'm here okay, for well, all this of it. Was, this, has been, this has been a lot of fun. I hope all of our listeners will uh, take this for a test drive and let us know what they think. So I'm going to put the Vitamix on my wish list. And, you know, I might have to just start a little uh, fund, a GoFundMe <laughs> for my Vitamix. I'm in support of all of that. <laughs> You know, it might be a couple years before I get my Vitamix, but you know, I'm it's good to have a goal. I, it's, it's good. Kitchen goals. Mm-hmm. Hashtag, Hashtag kitchen, kitchen goals. goals. There I we like go. It. Okay, honey. Thanks for joining us. And uh, can't wait to have you back real soon. Sounds good. Yapping. Get us yapping. Get us yapping. Oh, get us yapping. He's back, Benjamin the Yiddish Yapper, and today our topic might surprise you. I know it surprised me. I learned something new about my dear friend. He is a football fan. I don't quite understand why this is so surprising to everyone, but clearly when, you, when you're the one in my shoes, it's, it's just, you know, it's a natural thing. You grow up with football around you, and at some point you enjoy it, but it definitely has not been for my whole life. Okay, so this is a new thing. Well, not, not so new, but about two or three years ago, you know, in, in the gay community, you sort of enter your 20s with this thing called Sunday Fun Day. And so you go out with your friends, you drink three, 
Why, why can't we straight people have Sundays? Well, once in a while, we invite you along because it's good to have a little bit of diversity at the bar. You know what I mean? Got to shake things up a little bit. Someone's got to be the sober card. So it got to this point. So you're drinking your gallons of mimosas and you're dancing. And then by two o'clock, you switch from that to three for ones. And then if you can make it until nine, you go out for two for ones. And so... But I realized that... Oh, can we just back up? You guys have those kind of drink deals because something's clearly wrong with the straight Well, you know, it's funny. I was just out on a little date last night, and we won't go there. But I mentioned to the fellow that I was with, I said, my gosh, I've had three drinks here, and I don't feel a thing. If I was three drinks in at the saloon, I'd be on the floor schnockered. <laughs> Well, I am familiar with the quote unquote gay poor. It is it is stronger. Well, do you, you know where? Well, we can go over this another time, but there's actually a reason why the gay poor is stronger. Well, let, let's just do it now, brother. Why well, we there was wait? this theory that a long time ago. I feel like time out. Can we just? I feel like now we've just got to. We're changing you from the Yiddish shepherd to the, yeah. the lesson in gay. I agree. <laughs> let's keep going. Keep going. No, no, no. Let's get it back to the Yiddish shepherd. Oh, okay. I, I have a feeling we might hear anyway, some back to, that they back, watch. <laughs> that'll be for another segment. Something a little okay, bit more sounds dramatic. Good. But anyhow, so Sunday Fun Day was great until all of a sudden I started acquiring more straight male friends. Now, this was a big deal because they were the ones that were usually the mean people when I was a kid growing up, you know, the fat gay Jew. Not an easy, not an easy thing to wear over my head as a kid. I was the chubby kid, the feminine kid. And so... All of a sudden, I started made, making these straight male friends who happen to be usually the boyfriends or the husbands of my fabulous girlfriends. And I realized that every fall, they just disappeared on Sunday fun day. And I, I started getting upset about it. I thought, we need this diversity in our lives, so let's get them back. So I thought one day, I'm going to try to figure out football. Because every Sunday, I lose my friends for the morning. And so I said to my friend, explain football to me. And he said, you got 25 seconds? And he explained the game to me, and slowly but surely, you just start to enjoy it. And there's a Yiddish word that comes to mind with football, and especially when you are at a bar or you're with people, and it's ruach. Ruach. So, ruach. Ruach. Okay. Ruach. Yeah, very it good, It sounds Christy. like a cheer. Cheer. What, what so, does it mean? ruach is spirit. And oh. so often when you're in a bar and you're with people who are cheering for a team that's your home team or a team that you love. There's this sense of community and ruach, and it just feels good to be there. So for a period of time, I parked the gallons of mimosas and moved on to the Buffalo Wings and the Miller Lite and kind of <laughs> tried to figure out football for a while. And lo and behold, for a short period of time, there was a gay sports bar here in Minneapolis. There, no longer? No longer. Oh, okay. No, it's just... <laughs> Yeah, the, the gays in football just, in general, don't always work when it comes to creating an establishment for it. But anyhow, we started going every Sunday. And, you know, we're drinking and drinking and eating and eating and ruach and ruach and skull, skull, skull. And I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about for the first four or five months. But then at some point, I remember saying, go, go, go. And actually having it mean something relative to what the player was doing on the field. <laughs> You and weren't then, like the cheerleader um, cheering about defense when the team was on offense. You weren't doing that kind of stuff. Well, in the beginning, and then beginning too, I, all, I, all, I also used to say, oh my God, why did he do that? And my friends would say, that's a good thing what he just did. And I'd be like, I know, that's what I meant. You know, that kind of a thing. So anyhow, between that, my mother who loves football, my whole Facebook, which seems to blow up with skull, 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 and purple, purple every Sunday during football season. And I thought... Why not? So, Ruach, you enjoy the Ruach. 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 So, you got to work on that one, Christy. <laughs> We've got Ruach. Yes, we do. We've got Ruach. How about you? <laughs> okay, what else? What other kind of things? Are there any other Yiddish words you yell while you're watching or when you're in, disgusted with a play? Or uh, do you ever yell in Yiddish? Uh, you know, not, not often in front of my friends because some of them are pretty strict to just like, let's keep it to Vikings certain uh, football okay. sort of lingo. Um, but, you know, you, you can definitely slip in a little, oy vey, why did he do that? Yeah, oy vey. You, you know, which happens all the time. You know, you see a guy running out into the middle of the field and he's, you don't even know why he's there and all of a sudden the game's happening here and he's over here and it just, 
Oy vey. You're constantly disappointed and constantly excited in a football game. There you go. There you go. And um, do you wear the purple when you go to the game? <laughs> I don't yet have, although I did go to the foot. I went to the U.S. Bank Stadium for the first time. Okay. Oh my God, what a scene. Any, any so, Yiddish words used go, to describe the stadium? I go, I get these tickets to go to the football stadium. And first of all. For those of our I, listeners who don't know, the U.S. Bank Stadium in Minnesota is new within the last, uh, last year was the inaugural season. So just FYI, it's right in downtown Minneapolis. And if y'all heard that, um, let me just say that again. Downtown Minneapolis. <laughs> Not uptown, downtown. <laughs> so it started off with a lovely brunch before I went with my good friend, Lindsay. And then we tried to find this parking garage because we've been given free parking and tickets by my wonderful cousin, Zoe, who is now working for the foundation for the Vikings. And I start off my morning feeling very, very famished. Famished? Do tell. Famished. I'm in my car. And you know when someone says, oh, the parking garage is right here. It's easy to find. You just go down here and turn left. Oh, no. So I turn left into one of those garages that you can't exit out of without <laughs> having a ticket, which already gets me all famished. So famished means mixed up. Oh, famished. <laughs> and so I'm driving around. Finally, I find a way out. And then I keep on driving around in circles downtown. And I'm a little bit fearful that I'm starting to get a bit, little bit for bludgeoned. For bludgeoned. What is that? Well, for luncheon is forgetful. Kind of like, you know, when your parents start to say, oh, it was so good to talk to you today. And you're like, ma, that was yesterday. For luncheon. For luncheon. For luncheon. For luncheon. Okay. So finally, I find the garage and I get in. And then we start walking through the tunnels or the skyways, as we call them here. And oy vey, the scene of different, the gradient of people that go to a football game. (laughs) Is, is, is truly unbelievable. You got people in their pajamas. You got people in their Vikings gear. You've got people that are 37, year old, 37 years old with, you know, hair ties and pom-poms and pink glitter all over them. And there is such a sense of ruach once you enter the stadium. You just can't help but kind of get into it a little bit, especially after two or three beers. But the best part about going to the stadium is that you get to see halftime, which normally oh, you don't get to, to see. Well, how about home, the pregame is amazing. Oh, I mean, so, so dramatic. You had to just love the drama. It's so dramatic. Although half of the game, my friend and I were declaring that all the cheerleaders really should be drag queens. So I definitely <laughs> oh my got... God, you're so bad. You are so bad. <laughs> I got the first... I went to the opening game um, with Green Bay uh, last... I don't know if that would have been September. And I remember the cheerleaders. And I remember saying to the people I was with, I feel like I need to go take a shower because... It, the routine that they were doing was so nasty. I was like, what, oh, what happened to it the really is. You know, like, yay team. Rah, rah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rah. We've got, what is it? What's the spirit word? Ruach. <laughs> we got Ruach. How about you? There was none of that going on. <laughs> so the first person that can at some point contact Christy with a recording of the proper pronunciation of Ruach <laughs> that did not grow up speaking Yiddish can call or reach out to me and get a prize. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's probably some kind of hair product, people. I would reach out if I were you. <laughs> well, so I love the words for today, so okay, I kind of want to go over let's them go. so that everybody gets a sense of, of what, what we're doing. So the first one is famished. So when you're having one of those days where you just you just kind of keep getting confused and you feel like you woke up on the wrong side of bed. You can just say, oh yeah, I'm a little famished Famished. So then if you start to worry about a friend or a parent or a grandmother or someone who just like, God forbid, could leave the stove on, you say, oh, they're getting a little bit for blungent. Got to keep an eye on them for for blungent. And then finally, ruach which I think is such a great word and a, a great word that we should all have in our life. So whenever, you're, whenever you enter a place or you are in an environment where you just feel like there's a huge sense of spirit, you say, oh, look at the ruach. In and here. Benjamin, I, I would say to you, you have wonderful ruach. Did I do it right? Oh, no. Darn it. Okay, I'll keep working. Thank you for being here. With the Super Bowl coming back to Minnesota, I thought I should share one of my favorite stories about the last time Minnesota hosted the Super Bowl. I really need to work on a bumper for this segment, 
But since I don't have a sound bumper, I'll simply say, let me tell you a story. When I graduated from college, I began a very glamorous two and a half year career as a freelance production assistant in the wonderful world of video and television production. I have tons of stories from this time, but one of my favorite stories took place when I was lucky enough to serve as a PA for the Super Bowl halftime show when Minnesota hosted it back in 1992. I was absolutely thrilled when the Arizona-based production company hired me. I started at the beginning of January. Now, being a PA, it's far from glamorous. Okay, truth be told, you are a bit of a peon. Okay, you are a peon. I answered phones in the office, I ran some errands, and I ate tons of Dove ice cream bars in the NFL break room. When I answered the phone, I would say, Super Bowl Halftime Timberline Productions, this is Christy, how can I help you? As you can imagine, this is a bit of a mouthful, especially when there are five lines lit up. I can't tell you how many times I flubbed this opening line. The theme for our halftime show was winter magic. And to be perfectly honest, I think winter menagerie would have been more appropriate. It was as if all these people from Arizona, they had a brainstorming session to think of all things winter. And they said, that's it. We have to do it all. I mean, we had dancing snowflakes, Russian Cossack dancers, rapping snowmen, dancers with endless props from batons, balloons, hockey sticks, snowflakes, inline skates, rhythmic rhythms, and snowmobiles. I'm going to include a link in the show notes to the YouTube video from the actual TV coverage of the halftime production. Trust me, you might want to check this out. Leading up to the Super Bowl weekend, my producer, Rita, assigned me to the green room. She told me I had one job. My one job would be to make it happen. She explained that the talent we had in for the halftime show, they would be getting ready in the green room, and I had to cater to their every request. I was supposed to make it happen. One of the segments in our little halftime show included a salute to the Winter Olympics. We had Brian Boitano and Dorothy Hamill skating on fake ice. Okay, that was extremely innovative at the time. I don't think they had ever skated on this kind of fake ice until rehearsal that day. In the green room, Dorothy Hamill gave me my first make it happen request. She came to me and asked for scissors. As a PA, I had a very well-stocked fanny pack. I filled it with anything I thought they might need. But guess what? I didn't have a scissors. Knowing I needed to make it happen, I looked at her and said, well, let me find you one. I headed out of the green room into the bowels of the Metrodome, and I started to run. I found a kitchen where they were actually prepping the hot dogs, and I saw a scissors they were using to open the packages. I begged the hot dog guy to let me borrow it for just a couple minutes. I ran back to the green room. No, don't worry, Mom. I'm sure I ran with the scissors pointing down. I proudly presented the scissors to Dorothy. She pulled out this plank of a makeup sponge and tried to cut off a little triangle. With a frustrating sigh, she said, These are dull. They can't cut this. So I reached into my fanny pack and I handed her my Swiss Army knife. As I pulled out my biggest blade, I said, you can use this if you promise not to cut yourself. At the start of the second quarter, it was my job to locate the 1980 hockey team and get them into some jerseys that, well, they looked like the Olympic uniforms. 
and I was to get them lined up because they were going to parade onto the stage and light off these pyro cones. I seem to recall before the game, we paid for these guys to go eat and drink at a steakhouse. So let's just say they weren't feeling any pain. And let's also say they were in no hurry to leave their seats at the start of the second quarter. So when there were just a few minutes remaining in the quarter, I was sweating when I couldn't find them. I seem to recall our halftime production was the first time an indoor event used pyrotechnics. I'm not sure whose idea it was to have a bunch of lit up hockey players light up some pyro on a stage, but thankfully the fire department was not needed. For the final segment, we brought Gloria Estefan to the stage, onto a platform. This was her first big appearance after she broke a vertebrae in a car crash the year before. Again, I'm not sure who, but somebody thought it would be a good idea to put her on this platform and hoist her up about 150 feet off the ground, all the while she was singing and dancing in these crazy high stiletto boots. While we had five minutes to set the props, stage, and hundreds of dancers, Rita, my producer, found me and said, go get Gloria an Evian. Now, I'm on the 50-yard line when I get this request. I'm supposed to make it happen. So I took off running. I ran back to this dugout. It was the dugout where I met the hockey team to put on those jerseys. I kind of recalled seeing a cooler in there. Well, I got lucky And there was a cooler in there, and there was even an Evian in that cooler. I ran back to the 50-yard line where Gloria Stefan and her entourage were standing. Gloria was dressed in this leather bustier with big pearl embellishments and this feather tutu. As I caught my breath, I nervously approached Gloria and I said, Miss Estefan, would you like an Evian? She said, wow, you think of everything. Now, if only you could figure out a way for me to pee in this costume. This was the last halftime show of its kind. From that moment on, they switched to the concert format you see today. While the 13-minute winter magic show was far from memorable, I remember my very brief interaction with Gloria Stefan. Her response as I handed her an Evian is one of the most valuable life lessons I've learned. When she said, wow, you think of everything. Now, if only you could figure out a way for me to pee in this costume. She was authentic and appreciative, even to a peon PA like me. That's it for episode 10. Thank you all so much for listening. As you know, this is a hobby for me, and I hope you can tell how much fun we're having producing this. Please share it with a friend you think needs to escape a little of their own reality. A big thanks this week to Liza for her kitchen gadgets. I'm still trying to figure out a way we can get the quote-unquote secret ingredient for her guacamole recipe. And to our Yiddish shopper, Benjamin. Thanks for sharing your ruach, ruach, with us. Oh, Lord. Anyway, I love your spirit and your stories. Finally, a huge thank you to Josie Eichers. I'm so excited you are taking a social media class this semester. I can't wait to see where you'll take us. Please, 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 please keep Josie busy. Tell us what you think on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Remember, bruises are like life. The harder you get hit, the more colorful and interesting they get. Diva.